Welcome to Micron's hardware. Some time ago I have received a bunch of different Chinese X99 motherboards for testing. Those were Machinist X99 RS9, Machinist or Clissera X99 version 201, Tinyue X99 M Plus D4 and Chiyida X99 H9. My review and detailed testing results of Machinist X99 RS9 you have already seen on my channel, and the rest three motherboards I have left for later testing because I had other projects to work on. Today I have finally tested all three motherboards, and I can tell you that it doesn't make any sense to make a dedicated video for each motherboard. All of these boards are basically identical, all of them are using the same layout, all of them are working with the same BIOS, and all of them have the same issues, pros and cons. If you're interested in the detailed technical results and technical specification of these boards, please follow the link in the video description and watch my review for Machinist X99 RS9. Everything I tell about that motherboard is also applicable for these two boards and Clissere or Machinist X99 version 201. In short, all of the motherboards work with Huanangi X99 8MF BIOS. This is important because all of them are coming with a BIOS which does not have memory configuration, or more precisely the run time is configuration. All of the motherboards do not support sleep mode, all of the motherboards are using cheap desktop chipset, thus you do not have temperature sensors readings and you do not have uh, accurate power consumption readings from the CPU. Here I can mention that the CPU temperature is provided correctly because those temperature sensors are installed in the CPU, not on the motherboard. It's the motherboard temperature sensors which are not functioning well. Then we also have a slight problem with the USB 3.0 ports. With the original BIOS, these motherboards have problematic USB 3 ports and your system may crash or hang if you try to run Crystal Disk Mark Benchmark with an external Samsung T5 SSD drive. But flushing Huanangi X99 8MF BIOS solved this issue. Crystal Disk Mark Benchmark completes. On some of the boards it's taking a bit longer, on others it's taking a bit shorter, but in general it takes 5 to 10 minutes to complete. During the benchmark the system might be hanging a little bit, but the system doesn't crash and is not falling with any kind of errors. So USB 3.0 boards are working, but their speed is slower than expected and there might be some unexpected delays. All four of the boards are using exactly the same VRM system. We have four phase PWM controller, but only three phases are used to power the CPU. Each phase has a doubler, and each doubler is producing two phases, and there are two MOSFETs on each phase. So the power system is absolutely identical, but the heatsink is slightly different on all four motherboards. Machinist Oclis Rea X99 version 201 is the worst motherboard out of the four. First, it is using the cheapest desktop chipset, which is H81. The chipset is limited to just two SATA 3 ports, and the motherboard does not have M.2 slot for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth expansion cards. The other motherboards are using either B85 or Q87 chipset, thus these four SATA ports are SATA 3 ports, and you are getting an extra M.2 slot to install Wi-Fi and Bluetooth expansion cards. Now let's talk a little bit about the power delivery system and its cooling. All of the motherboards have absolutely inadequate cooling for the VRM and you shall not install anything like E52678V3 onto these small boards. Maximum I would ever recommend to install into this board is E52640V3, but better you be with E52620, E52630V3. Out of the four boards, Machinist X99 RS9 has the best heatsink or VRM radiator, whatever you call it. Machinist Oclisere X99 version 201 and Chiyida X99 H9 has the smallest and the worst radiator. The problem is that this radiator is not only small, it's also mounted on the motherboard with plastic clips. I think this is absolutely unacceptable and you shall avoid these motherboards, and I can tell you why. Testing with ADA64 stress test and Xeon E52678V3 Turbo Boost unlocked on this motherboard and the Machinist or Clissere X99 version 201, after 15 minutes I have got more than 100 degrees Celsius. This is a serious fire hazard and you shall not buy these motherboards. Even with E52620V3, Turbo Boost Unlocked CPU heats up this VRAM in just 15 minutes to 75 degrees Celsius. 
Tingue X99 M Plus D4 provides slightly better results, but unfortunately this heatsink is not much better. Even though it looks bigger and it seems to be better, it does not cool as good as we would hope for. Testing with the same E5 2678 V3, Turbo Boost Unlock, Ada 64 stress test, after 15 minutes VRM also heated up almost 200 degrees. Yes, it was not as high as this miracle, but it was still pretty high. I don't think you should consider that this is acceptable. It is interesting to mention that Quanager X99 ZD4 uses exactly the same VRM system as these four motherboards, but the VRM is able to withstand or withhold E5 2678V3 and do not heat up more than 75 degrees Celsius even after one hour of ADA64 stress test. I was really confused by this behavior because VRM is the same, and MOSFETs are the same, but the temperatures are drastically different, more than 25 degrees Celsius difference between one and the other motherboard. So I started my investigation and I have figured out that the most likelihood of this behavior is that Honanjo X99 ZD4 has all components under the heatsink. So the heatsink is covering the MOSFETs and the doublers of the VRM, while these cheap alternatives, they are cooling with the heatsinks only the MOSFETs. The doublers are not covered with a heatsink, thus they are not cooled at all. And after my testing with a thermometer, I have figured out that these doublers are going up to 75 and more degrees Celsius. The higher temperature of a doubler is, the less efficiently it is working, and thus the VRM is heating up even more. This is the only reasonable explanation I can figure out of why Huanan GX99 ZD4 with exactly the same power delivery system is able to hold up the load with E5 2678V3, while these cheap alternatives having the same power delivery system simply can't do that. And for the conclusion, I can say the following. If you're looking for a budget X99 motherboard for your E5 2620 or 2630 LV3, then you shall go for Huanangi X99 ATMF or Machinist X99 RS9. These two motherboards are probably the best out of all alternatives. Truth to be told, I have got some feedback about Machinist X99 RS9 that those motherboards are defective. I'm not sure if that is true or not true, and I don't have any means to validate those claims, but that's what my subscribers say. My particular motherboard worked with no issues, and all of my friends who bought this motherboard also did not report any issues. I did not receive such complaints about Huanangi X99 ATEM-F, but that motherboard has only two memory slots, thus it's up to you to decide if you want to go the Machinist route or the Huanangi route. If you really badly want to have a white X99 motherboard, then you can also take a look at Tinyue X99 M Plus D4. Unfortunately, the DDR3 version of this motherboard is pointless. For now, we do not have any CPUs which can be installed onto the DDR3 version of this motherboard. If i2678 V3 consumes too much power for this board, if i2649 V3 costs too much, and there are no other alternatives. Clisere or Machinist X99 version 201 and Chiyida X99 H9 should be avoided at all cost. The VRM heatsink or power system radiator is absolutely unacceptable. The system needs some external cooling and if you happen to have this motherboard, please make sure to install some extra fans to ensure airflow of the VRM so the system is not cooking itself. With this video I have tested almost every Chinese X99 motherboard and now I have to figure out what to buy and what to test for my next videos and what will be interesting for you and for me. Still, there are two extra X99 motherboards from Huanangi which I might be testing. One is Huanangi X99 AD4 and another one is Huanangi X99 BD4. Most likely you can already find some information about these boards online, there are some reviews in different languages. But if you're interested, leave me a comment down below and I will try to make a review about these boards. As far as I know, X99 AD4 uses X99 or C612 chipset, thus you can overclock E5 1650 and 1660 V3 or i7 CPUs. X99 BD4 uses cheap B85 or Q87 chipset, thus it's only possible to implement Turbo Boost Unlock feature, but it's not possible to overclock CPUs with unlocked multiplier. As far as I know, both of the motherboards use a semi-decent power delivery system and you can install CPUs with up to 140W TDP. 
For now though, that's probably all I can tell you about these motherboards. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, I hope you have enjoyed it, bye bye!